Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello all, welcome to the lecture on Raman spectroscopy. In the last couple of lectures, we have discussed rotational Raman spectroscopy and the effect of nuclear spin, effect of nuclear spin on the rotational Raman spectrum. There is another kind of Raman spectroscopy which is the vibrational Raman spectroscopy. But before going into the vibrational Raman spectroscopy, in today's lecture we will cover the concept of polarizability and polarizability ellipsoid. So, in the first lecture on Raman spectroscopy, we had stated that as long as the electric field of the electromagnetic radiation is not too strong, the induced dipole moment which we can write as mu induced. So, this induced dipole moment is directly proportional to the applied electric field which is given by E. And so, we can write mu induced equals alpha times E where alpha here is polari polarizability. The polarizability is a characteristic of the molecule that depends on the molecular structure and the nature of the bonds. So, in this equation, the induced dipole moment is a vector. Also, the electric field is a vector, but the polarizability alpha is a tensor. So, we can see that the polarizability tensor changes the electric field to give rise to the induced dipole moment. So, what exactly is this picture? Let us say we draw electric fields in this direction. And let us say we have a molecule which is N O that is N double bond O and N O is in this direction which is kind of perpendicular to the electric field. So, we know that the bonding electron of N O is between N and O or we can say the electron density is concentrated between N and O. Now, in the presence of this electric field, the electron density will adjust itself. To what extent the molecule can polarize itself, that is adjust itself in the external field E and undergo simple changes in its geometry that is given by the term alpha. If you now think about a different molecule, let us say we have H C triple bond N. So, this HCN molecule itself has a dipole moment and it has the vibrational modes like the symmetric stretch, 
the asymmetric stretch and the bending modes. If such a molecule which has some dipole moment and undergoing vibration is put in an external electric field. So, this electric field may induce an additional dipole moment. So, let us say it already had some dipole moment mu, but the electric field will induce some additional dipole moment. So, the dipole moment will be mu plus mu induced. So, we can see the induced dipole moment is directly a property of the electric field. The induced dipole moment may not be in the direction of the electric field and that is why we have the polarizability that is alpha as a tensor. Because induced dipole is a vector, it has three components. So, let us first write the equation that is mu induced which is a vector equals alpha which is a tensor times electric field which is a vector. So, this induced dipole moment has three components that is we can write mu induced x mu induced y and mu induced z in the axis system that also defines the electric field. So, the electric field itself has three components E x, E y and E z. So, then alpha or the polarizability is given by a 3 by 3 matrix and the components of alpha or the indices of alpha are related to the direction of the component of the electric field on the right as well as the direction of the component of the induced dipole on the left side. So, let us write the components now. So, we have alpha x x, alpha x y, alpha x z and then we have alpha y x, alpha y y and alpha y z and we have alpha z x, alpha z y and alpha z z. Thus, the electric field is the cause and the induced dipole is the effect. So, this is a general rule stating that effect is directly proportional to the cause and we can see similar examples in cases of Hooke's law or in case of Ohm's law. So, coming back to polarizability, polarizability connects the cause to the effect and we can write the components of alpha. So, therefore, we have here the components of alpha and therefore, the directions of the cause and the effect are written as subscripts. Let us say we have x x here. Thus, alpha x x times E x gives mu induced in the x direction. This means the alpha x x tells us the x component of the induced dipole moment with respect to the x component of the electric field. This essentially means that the x component of the induced dipole moment is given by. So, we can write 
mu induced x equals alpha x x e x plus alpha x y e y plus alpha x c e z. Similarly, for mu induced y and mu induced z, we can write mu induced y equals alpha y x times e x plus alpha y y times e y plus alpha y z times e z and mu induced z we can write alpha z x times e x plus alpha z y times e y plus alpha z z times e z. So, we can see we have 9 components 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And out of these 9 components, the alpha x y and alpha y x are equal. So, this alpha x y is arising from the y component of the electric field inducing a change in the x component of the induced dipole moment. On the other hand, alpha y x term arises from the x component of the electric field inducing a change in the y component of the mu induced. The properties connected by the reversals of the direction of the electric field and the induced dipole moment are equal. So, similarly, we can see that this x z term and alpha z x term they are equal and this alpha z y term is equal to alpha y z. So, in other words, if you think this has the diagonal, then elements diagonally opposite are equal. So, x y is equals to y z, then z x equals to x z and z y is equal to y z. So, we do not have 9 independent components anymore but all we have are these 6 independent candidates or the components. So, this is with respect to the x y z coordinate system. The alpha matrix here this is a symmetric matrix. So, the symmetric matrices can be diagonalized. So, what do we mean by that? So, let us write the matrix of alpha again. So, we have 